In this video, I'm going to look at how we can calculate EA and A, so that's the activation energy and the pre-exponential factor. How can we calculate these graphically from something known as Arrhenius plots? Now to do this, we're going to use the natural log form of the Arrhenius equation, which you can see I've written up there. Remember, this is given on the data sheet, so you don't have to memorise this. And what we're going to do is just very quickly look at, well, why can we use this to draw these graphs? So you can see I've rewritten this minus EA over RT term. I've rewritten it slightly differently, where I've taken out the 1 over T and separated it from the minus EA over R. So essentially that there is exactly the same as that. So why have I done that? I've done it because it makes it easier to see that this form of the equation is actually in the y equals mx plus c format. So we've got lin k is our y term and our x term is 1 over the temperature. So the gradient of the graph that we're going to get, remember this is going to be a straight line graph, which is a straight line equation. The gradient will be equivalent to minus EA over R. There's that activation energy there. Remember R is the gas constant, which is also on the data sheet. And the y-intercept C will be lin of A. So we'll look at this question, which I've written up to sort of mirror the kind of question you'll get on the exam. So we've got a table of data. You can see there are two values missing. And you can see the first part of the question, we've got to add the missing values to the table. The second part of the question, we're going to have to plot a graph of lin k against 1 over t. And we're going to use our graph to calculate the value for the activation energy EA. And then finally, we're going to use our calculated value for EA to work out a value for the pre-exponential factor A. So if you want to pause the video and have a go at the question and then play on and I'll go through my answer. So there's your two missing values, 0 0.00319 and minus 5.70. So there's my graph. I've chosen a scale to make sure that I'm covering at least half of the graph paper. You can see I've virtually covered the entire sheet of graph paper there. So on my x-axis, I'm starting at 0 0.0026 and I'm going up to 0 0.0034. My y-axis, I'm going from 0 to negative 10. Not forgetting labels, so I've got lin k on my y-axis and 1 over t on my x-axis. And I've got the units there for 1 over t. Notice lin k, no units. So I've plotted my points and you can see we've got one outlier there, one rogue result there. The other four results are almost perfectly in line with each other. So I've got my line of best fit missing out that point there. You see I made a little mistake, apologies for that. Um, so line of best fit and I'm getting a nice straight line graph there. So there'll be quite a few marks up for grabs just for plotting the graph. Don't, don't make any silly mistakes or lose any silly marks by missing out labels of axes. And make sure that your scale is sensible and you don't have like a tiny, tiny little graph. Um, sort of stamp size graph. We don't want those. Rule of thumb is to try and cover at least half of the graph paper. So to calculate the activation energy, we ultimately need to calculate the gradient of the line because within the gradient term, we've got our activation energy. So looking at my graph here, I've created this triangle here, which I've chosen to go down to negative nine on the y-axis. So you can see that my change in y 
is coming out at minus 8.2. So I've gone from minus 9 to minus 0 0.8. And that gives me a change of negative 8.2. My change in the x axis is 0 0.00327, which is what I've got here. And I'm starting right here, so that's nice and easy. 0 0.0026. So I've got a change in my x axis at 0 0.00067. Now yours may well be slightly different to that. There's always a little bit of tolerance on these kind of questions. Um, not a massive amount when you've got straight line graphs, a bit more on curves, but you should be getting round about the same as me there. So you can see there's my gradient calculation. My dy by dx is coming out at negative 8.2 divided by 0 0.00067. So I'm getting negative 12238.806. So remember, what does the gradient actually equate to? It equates to minus Ea over R. So to find out what the activation energy is, we need to take that R term over to this side and multiply this number by R, which remember is 8.314. So you can see that's giving me minus EA equals minus 101753.43. You can see I've got the unit in there. Remember, activation energy in the Arrhenius equation, because of joules being in the R term, it's in joules per mole. So the next thing we need to do is lose these minus signs. And just get rid of them because we've got one on either side. So the activation energy, Ea, is coming out at 101.753 kilojoules per mole. So let's go three significant figures. 102 kilojoules Per mole. So if you remember the final thing we have to do is calculate the value for the A term, the pre-exponential factor. And we did say that in the y equals mx plus c equation that the y-intercept is going to give us this lin A term. Now the problem we've got with the graph is I've sort of started my axis, my x-axis at 0 0.0026. So we can't do the y-intercept because the y-intercept is obviously where x equals 0. Now we can't do a y-intercept using this graph. So what we're going to have to do is choose a point on the graph. So I think I'm going to go for that point there. So I'm going to use the y value and the x value at that point. And I've just calculated the activation energy. And so that's going to give me everything else I need in the equation. So I can isolate lin a and then work out a value for a. So we'll do that now. So you can see I've just read off the axes that at that point there, I've got a lin k a y value of minus 5.70 and the x value there, remember that's 1 over t, so that's 0 0.0030. So I've just done 1 over that and I've got that 333 degrees from there. So the activation energy, remember we've just calculated it at 102 kilojoules per mole, but in the equation it has to be in joules per mole, so I've had to Multiply that by a thousand, and that's given me these numbers here for this term. So we'll tidy this up and we'll hopefully be left with lin a. So you can see there's all my working out. So all of this here gives me a value of minus 36.84. So I'm taking that over to the other side, it becomes positive. So I get 31.14 equals lin a. So a equals e to the 31.14 and that gives me a value for a at 3.34 times 10 to the 13 and the units of a 
are the same as the units of k, which if you remember from the start of the question, were seconds to the minus 1. So, of course, I've done a, a little bit of rounding, suitable rounding within there, so hopefully your answer isn't too different to mine. And just for my own interest, to be honest, I've done the calculation all over again, and I've done no rounding whatsoever. So I've gone from this gradient here, kept the numbers in the calculator all the, all the way through the rest of the calculation, and I get a no rounding answer of 3.06 times 10 to the 13 seconds to the minus one, of course. So in the exam, there will be some tolerance. So I'm sure both of those answers will be well within that.